I know, I know, I haven't done one of these in quite a while. Today, it's a My Creative Toolbox. This is episode number 55, Topaz Studio 2, My Creative Toolbox, a mountain painting. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, I thought I'd do a creative toolbox. You know, I haven't done one of these in quite a while, and some of you have been asking for them, so I decided I would do one today. I have this really cool mountain scene, and I'll do a painting of this image. I'm starting out in Photoshop, and I just duplicated my background layer because I don't really want to work with it. I want to work on a separate layer, so I duplicated it and named it Topaz Studio 2 because we're going to go into Topaz Studio 2. Next, I'm going to come up here to Filter and come down to Topaz Studio 2 and click on this. We'll launch Topaz Studio 2, and we will get underway. Let's start off by coming up to Add Filter, and I'm going to come down to one of my favorites, and I love this, the Impression Filter, and this will turn your image into a digital painting, and it works with different strokes and things like this. Okay, so that's Type 1, and then let's go to try some different strokes. Here's Type 2, and as you can see, we get different results when we click on these different um, strokes. Now, I like that one, Type 06, so remember that one. So let's go through and try some other ones here. And so far that type 06 is winning. These are more like sketchy type looks and they can be fun. And I also like this one, type 09. That one's not bad either. You know what? Type 09, what was the other one? Type 06, here's type 06, here's type 09. I think I like Type 09 a little bit better, so I think I'm going to go with this one. Now, next, we have number of strokes. Now, if we go with low, it'll be a little more abstract, medium, less abstract, and then high, more detailed. Okay, so that's too detailed. It looks too much like a photograph. So let's try medium, and I kind of like medium, but let's try low. Low's a little more abstract. I might try working with this, but first I think what I'll do is take the brush size and pull the brush size to the left, and that'll make the brush stroke smaller. And, okay, something like that. It stays a little more abstract, but I always like to come down to the very bottom to texture, because in texture we have background type. And sometimes you can see little flecks of the background showing through here, but if you click on original, all those little little flecks of background go away. And I think I like that, so I'm gonna do that. Now let me experiment a little bit. I'm gonna try some paint opacity. I'm gonna drag this to the right, and that'll make that paint stand out a little bit more. Now I don't like what's happening in the clouds, but I'm gonna show you something that we could do back in Photoshop when I'm done here. So don't worry so much about the clouds. We're just kind of looking at the rest of the image. Now that may be too much. I'm going to pull this back a little bit and let's play with the paint volume. Let's move this to the right and, you know, it just builds up those paint strokes a little bit. So I may just pull that up a little bit. I like the painterly look we're getting. And then we have a bunch of other tools here we can work with and that would be like stroke rotation. If I drag this to the right, you can see how the strokes are changing their rotation. You see that. I don't really think I like it for this one, so I'm going to leave that alone. And then we have one here called Stroke Color Variation. If we drag this to the right, it'll vary the color somewhat. You see that, how it's changing the colors a little bit? Now, you can go way too much here, and it looks really not so nice. But sometimes maybe just a little bit of variation in there could look really good. And I do like that, maybe somewhere around there. And then... You can adjust the width of the stroke. So if I drag it to the right, see how the strokes get wider or they get more narrow when I drag it to the left. And you can see the image takes on a whole nother look when I do that. So let me try to find a spot that I like. And I'm trying to keep more of a painterly look. You know, this is more of a sketchy type look when I drag it to the left, which can be quite nice as well. But I want it to be maybe right around there. Now, this is the length of the stroke. If I move it to the right, the strokes get longer or they get shorter if I move it to the left. And I think like right about there looks pretty good. And then you can add some smudge to this. It just kind of like smudges the paint. Watch, I'll move this to the right. 
and see how the paint gets smudgy. And that could be a nice uh, artistic look as well, but I don't really want so much of that today. So I may smudge it just a slight little bit. Sometimes a little goes a long way. As far as coverage and painting progress, I'm not going to play with that today. And there's some color adjustments in here and lighting. I don't usually use these too often, but uh, you can do that. And you can also add some texture, like if you wanted to have like a canvas look. I don't really do that too often because if I was going to print this out on, say, like canvas, I would have the actual canvas itself from the uh, print. So I wouldn't really want to do any of that. But so far, as far as the painting is concerned, I think that looks good. Now, if you left click your mouse on the image and hold it down, you can see there's the before and there's the after. So pretty dramatic look so far, a nice painterly look. But we're not done yet. Let's come up here to add filter. And I always like to try paint contrast, or not paint contrast, but precision contrast and precision detail. Paint contrast is part of the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. If you watch my TK8 videos, you know I really enjoy painting with contrast. But this is actually precision contrast. So let's click on this and Let's add a little bit of micro contrast, see how it brings out a lot of that really small areas of contrast. Maybe a little of that would look good. Let's try some low contrast. Now I just adjust and let my eye tell me what looks good. And I think that looks pretty good there. Let's try some medium. It's looking for larger areas of contrast. A little bit of that is nice. I like what's happening up in here. And then higher areas of contrast, it'll bring those out. And I like what's happening down in the flowers down in here and i think that looks really nice now let me left click and hold there's the before and there's the after so that's really good now i am noticing a little issue here see these flowers right in here they've lost some saturation and i think it's caused by this high contrast adjustment so let me back that off and watch those flowers when i back that off see if i back that off a little bit that color starts to come back in. So I'm going to pull that back a little bit. That was a little bit too strong. And now let's see what happens if I add a little bit of precision detail. Now this deals with uh, overall detail, shadow detail, and highlight detail. But I do like working with just basically the overall detail generally. So let's work with overall small detail. I'm going to drag this to the right. And it's looking for small areas of detail. See if I really pull it, you can see what it's really doing there. Now that, that can look cool, but I think that's way too much. But I might just bring out just a little bit of that. Again, a little bit, a lot of times goes a long way. Let's bring out some overall medium details. Not too much, because it's going to look not so nice if I go too much. And let's try overall large. See what happens here. And that's too much, but I think maybe right about there. And then we have this overall opacity. All of these filters have uh, an opacity slider. So if it's too strong, you can drag this off. I'm going to take it the whole way off and now take it to the right slowly and see. And I think maybe right around 73%. Now here's my overall before and after. Here's my before and here's my after. And I think I like it. And that's probably all I want to do in here. Now, once you're happy, just come up here to the top menu bar and click accept. And that'll send you back to Photoshop. Now, just like that, we're back in Photoshop. Here is the before and here is the after. Now, you can take this overall opacity and you could start to drag this back if you want to bring back some of the original image back in. And I might just do that, bring it back to about, uh, let's say, 85%. Here is the before and here's the after. Now, I do not like what's happening up here in the sky. What we can do is add a layer mask to this layer to take care of that sky. Now, first, what I want to do is shut off this layer because I want to select the sky, but I don't want it to be influenced by the painting. So I'm going to shut this layer off. And we're going to come and come up to select and you'll notice sky is grayed out, right? I cannot select the sky. So what can I do? Well, simple. All we need to do is click on the very first layer, which is really the background layer and now come back to select and now click on sky in Photoshop. We'll select the sky and now the sky is selected and you can see the marching ants showing us that the sky is selected. Now let's turn on the Topaz Studio 2 layer. 
and make it active. Now all we need to do is place a layer mask on it and that selection will be added. So if we come down here to the bottom and click on this icon, we'll add a layer mask and you notice now that the sky has been selected. But it's the opposite of what I want. So what I need to do is invert this. And to invert this, make sure the mask is selected and do a command or control I and that will invert it. So now you can see we have the painterly effect in the uh, foreground, but the sky, it's masked out. Now, we want that sky to look like a painting as well, but not as strong of an effect. So you see this density slider here? This is a really good tip. A lot of people forget about this density slider. We can take this density slider now, and I'm going to start to drag it to the left. And as I do you can see some of that painterly effect. See it starting to come back in? If I drag it the whole way to the left, the mask turns white. But as I drag it to the right, watch the mask starts getting like shades of gray. Light shades of gray, then darker and darker as I drag this over. And I'm just gonna drag this to where I get that sky to have a little bit of a painterly effect, but it still looks nice and smooth. And I think maybe right about there. Now, here is the overall before and here is the after. So isn't that pretty cool? So now we have a nice painterly effect down here. We have a painterly effect in the sky, but it's not as strong. Now there's just one more finishing touch. You see these lines here, they were from poles, and I don't think they look so good in the image. So I'm gonna put a blank pixel layer above this layer by clicking this icon right here. Just puts a blank pixel layer. I'm gonna get my spot healing tool and you just type your J, that's your shortcut key for it, or it's this icon right here in your toolbar. And I'm gonna make my brush right around that size, and I'm just gonna go ahead and paint down on that pole, and that pole goes away, and the same with this one here, just to clean it up a little bit, because again, I don't think it looks that great. And let's make sure I got that. And here's a little thing here I don't like. Here's another one of those poles right here. Let's get rid of that. And even this line right here, I don't like it. Cleanup's very important. You can look over your image and if there's things you don't like, you can take them out. And I think I like it at this point. But there's a little trick here with that spot healing tool. Make sure you have sample all layers checked on when you're painting on this blank pixel layer. And then at this point, you could just save this image or you could flatten the image or whatever you want to do. You know, your typical Photoshop stuff. But that's it. Well, there it is, everyone. This was episode number 55 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. I hope you enjoyed it today. If you did, please give it a like, a share, and please subscribe to my channel and click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified when you click that icon. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, Happy editing!